Welcome back to the second tier of this module. As stated in the last video, most of the mycobacterium are pretty rare. If anything, knowing the presentations for TB is the most important by far. But let's test you out anyway. A recent immigrant from India enters your office complaining of a fever, night sweats, and weight loss. She also states that she had a coughing fit the other day and her hand was speckled in blood. What disease is this? Of course, these are the stereotypic presentations of tuberculosis. Especially with a patient from an endemic area, this pathogen should be high on your list when hemoptysis is present. The following day, the patient's father comes to see you. Nothing like a good word of mouth endorsement. Unfortunately, he is complaining of back pain, and when sent for an x-ray, it displays lesions of the lower lumbar vertebrae. What is this presentation called? As they recently immigrated together, it is quite possible that one family member had infected the other sometime in the past. Unfortunately for dad, his disease is more progressive, leading to Pott's disease. The daughter returns several weeks later. Despite being compliant with her medications, she is worried her disease is spreading. We see her in a hospital in which we have permissions, and she now complains of headache and is irritable. We perform a lumbar puncture, which comes back abnormal. Assuming this is related to her TB diagnosis, what is this presentation called? Though not one of the more common TB sequelae, meningitis is a serious aspect of this disease. An LP will allow us to measure immune levels and other markers, as well as attempt to culture or stain the fluid. Lastly, a known TB patient is complaining of a painful skin lesion near, near their shins. On exam, they are red nodular skin pigmentations. What is the name of this skin presentation? The one skin manifestation to think about for TB is erythema nodosum. These painful lesions are most often found on the lower legs. Though it is not specific for only this bacterium, it is a great clue when combined with a patient's history. And now on to M. leprae. Let's make this one very simple. If the patient has an anesthetic neuropathy and deformed skin lesions, which form of leprosy is it? This is the more severe lepromatous leprosy. It can attack the nerves, leaving them permanently anesthetized. The one that is not lepromatous, and is also oddly associated with hair loss, is called what? Though tuberculosis is the most important microbe in this genre, tuberculoid leprosy is the lesser of importance in leprosy. I'm not really sure who came up with the naming of these, but you can remember that the one with alliteration is the more severe, and the one more likely to be tested on. For the non-tuberculosis mycobacterium, these are all relatively low yield. However, they are really easy to separate from each other if you know what to look for. So it would be a shame to miss out on a couple of easy points. If a patient comes in with a history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and is now complaining of myalgia and weight loss, which should we consider? MAC, or avium intracellulare, is a TB-like illness that can cause respiratory symptoms. Those with lung disease are also more susceptible to infections, possibly as our lungs are less able to expel the bug on their own. If a fisher scrapes their hand on a barnacle while cleaning their ship, which of the NTM would they most likely be infected with? Nearly all mycobacterium seem to like the water, but M. marinum is the most likely to be associated with aquariums and fishing on exams. Lastly, which of these is most associated with swimming pool? Though clinically indistinct, some question writers have used this point to separate out those water lovers in the past. In reality, having several different types of mycobacterium as different answers on the same question would be very difficult to accomplish when speaking of NTM. If anything, you are more likely to see a comparison between TB, leprosy, and NTM as a general category. The next section is quite complicated as we have many associated tests and unique features to discuss. They're actually much more testable than simply matching the disease to the correct species. So get ready for the Mycobacterium Distinguishing Features tier.